Hello, hello, hello everyone and welcome back to A Father's Commentary. I'm Robert Powell and this is the place where we study the Gospel of Matthew verse by verse. And today I'm coming to you uh, just a bit fired up about something. And uh, it's, it was generated by a video that I watched, uh, uh, saw it yesterday, or last night actually, um, from a college professor. Uh, she teaches at a major university. She teaches religious studies. She has her, uh, her bachelor's degree in religion. Her master's degree is in theology. And her doctorate is from Harvard in biblical studies. And so uh, you just look at the credentials and you think, oh, now whatever she says, she must know what she's talking about. Uh, she's written textbooks. She's written uh, just uh, books for Christian reading. Uh, but she will tell you to your face, she is not a Christian. She, she does not follow Christianity, and yet she teaches this. And the things that she had to say about Jesus Christ was just heretical. But the main point of her lecture that I was listening to was she was arguing that the Apostle Paul was not a Christian. That's the title of her lecture. And... Uh, my, my thinking on this is, uh, well, if you don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that God roped Himself in the flesh and came here to provide a way of escape for sinners, you're not going to believe the Apostle Paul either. So I shouldn't be surprised. But the real agenda there is the Apostle Paul in the book of Romans had something specifically to say about a certain sexual behavior. And I'll just leave it at that. But if you go to Romans 1, read Romans 1, and you'll see what the behavior is. And then in Romans, the end of Romans 1, and then the beginning parts of Romans uh, 2, he's saying because you, you have participated in this behavior and you will not repent, God has turned you over to a hard heart. And, because, and, and, and the word he uses is you will not repent. So God's just going to let you have your way. You go on down the road you want to go on with these sexual behaviors. But the day is coming when you will suffer the wrath of God. And that's Paul's words now. And so we see this move amongst people who have to attend with the book of Romans and with the Apostle Paul. And because what he's teaching disagrees with their political platform and with their own personal beliefs about sex, they attack the Apostle Paul. And so... Folks, we need to know what it is we believe. I, I, I couldn't believe what I was hearing from a theological college professor, and then I just did a, a search, and then dozens upon dozens of these videos came up where the Apostle Paul was under attack for what he believes. And so perhaps more than ever in our history as Christians, we better know what it is we believe. And so just very quickly, let me reassure you, the Apostle Paul was a Christian. He was a follower of Jesus Christ. And we know this, I, I'm just gonna quickly go through it. One, when he was persecuting Christians and he was uh, on the way, he had letters in hand to go and persecute some more Christians. And folks, he, I'm talking about to the point where he stood by, for instance, when Stephen was stoned to death. 
uh, he held the cloaks of the men who were stoning this, this early Christian believer. And so now there's a day of reckoning where Paul is on the way to do this again. He's on the road to Damascus and he gets knocked off his horse. And he's blinded by this light. And he's, he reaches out and he says, Who art thou, Lord? He recognizes that whatever this entity is, it's God. And the response is, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuteth. So right off the bat, he's recognized Jesus Christ as Lord. He's given some instructions. He goes and he sits and he waits for a disciple to come. And this disciple comes and lays hands on him and he receives his sight. And he goes out and gets baptized. So he believes, he gets baptized, and he gets filled with the Holy Spirit. Now we know that because later on in some of his writings, he mentions that I speak in tongues more than all of you. And if you study the scriptures any at all, speaking in tongues was one of the signs, one of the gifts of receiving the Holy Spirit. So he believed. Uh, there's uh, verses that talk about his change of direction, his repentance. He was baptized. And we even know he was baptized in Jesus' name because when he goes out and baptizes other people, guess how he baptizes them? In the name of Jesus Christ. So according to Peter, who when he preached the gospel message, people stood up and it says they were pricked in their heart and they wanted, what do we, wanted to know what do we have to do to be saved. And Peter stood up and said, you've got to repent. You've got to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and you have to receive the Holy Spirit. So now go back to, to uh, Paul. What did Paul do? Paul acknowledged, accepted Jesus Christ. He repented. He was baptized in Jesus' name. And again, we know that because he goes out and starts baptizing people in Jesus' name. And he received the Holy Spirit as evidenced by the gifts of the Spirit. Now there's people amongst Christianity today that says, Okay, yes, the first church did do all those things, but the present church doesn't have to do it. Uh, and they use mainly a scripture that says that when it, that's perfect. When it comes, tongues will cease and, and, and they're called cessationist. And this isn't a video that gives pros and cons about continuation or sensational. Um, Really, I just want to go after this movement that's taken place where people are attacking the Christianity of the Apostle Paul. And all Bible scholars are in agreement that the first church, the original church, the day of Pentecost church, while all the apostles were alive, are in agreement that you had to repent or that, that, that you had to believe, you had to repent, you got baptized in Jesus' name and you were filled with the Holy Spirit. And you can look at Acts 2, Acts 8, 16, Acts 10, 44, Acts 19 and 6. It happened that way every single time and the Apostle Paul experienced it that way and he taught it that way. So let me ask you, if that was the criteria to be in a Christian in the first church, how can you say Paul was not a Christian? Not only did he believe it, he taught it. So folks, that has stirred me up so much that we are going to back up a step. Now we, we cover the book of Matthew. And this video is going to be placed 
right to where um, in the beginning parts of Matthew where we talked about John the Baptist. Because John the Baptist's message was about repentance. And because this movement that's going through our country right now is saying that Paul's not a Christian, that Jesus was a heretic. Look, if you can take away the four Gospels, and if you can take away two-thirds of the New Testament that Paul wrote, there's not much New Testament Bible left. And that's really the agenda. Because if there's no one holding sin accountable, then we can, go, we can all go eat, drink, and be merry and live the lifestyle we want to live without any worries about repercussions. And so what we're going to do is back up. I want to make sure everyone that watches these videos understands Jesus Christ is God robed in flesh. That the Apostle Paul was a Christian. And that at least in the original church, and I argue still continues to this day, repentance is a major doctrine for Christianity. And so we're going to study repentance. We're going to study it just the way John the Baptist taught it. We'll look at Old Testament scriptures. We'll look at New Testament scriptures. And I'm saying to you, each of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And repentance is a means by which we acknowledge that sin. We express sorrow for that sin. And we change the path that we're going on. We change direction. And so that's where we're going. For the next couple of weeks, we're going to look at a whole lot of verses about the importance of repentance. So without further ado, let's get it. Repentance is one of the most important doctrines found anywhere in the Bible. Jesus paid the price for our sins. He is the way of salvation. And when we kneel at the cross, we give our lives to Him. We turn away from sin and we turn towards God. Hence, we find John the Baptist preaching repentance in the wilderness. We find Peter preaching repentance on the day of Pentecost. Today, we find real preachers holding to the same standard. Repent, repent, repent. Today, we will begin to look at what the Bible has to say about repentance. As we view the scriptures, absorb the words, let repentance become part of our spirits. In fact, let repentance become part of our daily walk with God. When nations sin, they must repent. When people sin, they must repent. When we sin, we must do the same. As we journey through this study, let the Holy Spirit lead you through what is required to come into the fullness of relationship with Jesus Christ. Scripture. Yet, if they turn their heart in the land to which they have been carried captive and repent and plead with you in the land of their captors, saying, We have sinned and acted perversely and wickedly. If they repent with all their heart and with all their soul, in the land of their enemies who carried them captive and pray to you toward their land which you gave to their fathers, the city that you have chosen and the house that I have built for your name. Then hear in heaven your dwelling place, their prayer and their plea 
and maintain their cause and forgive your people who have sinned against you and all their transgressions that they have committed against you and grant them compassion in the sight of those who carried them captive, that they may have compassion on them, for they are your people and your heritage. First Kings chapter 8. 47 to 51. You can see it again in 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verses 37 and 38. Sin separates us from God. It is a dark stain in His holy presence. This is why God robed Himself in human flesh and came to this earth to die for his creation. Jesus came to remove the sin barrier. And by his perfect sacrifice, the institutions of death, hell, and the grave were all defeated. We have no excuse to go to hell. We have been bought with a price. Each of us were born captive to sin. We were born into sin. We have all sinned against God. And if this is where you find yourself today, turn towards the cross of Calvary. Turn away from sin. Repent. Cry out to your Savior. Shake the very foundations of God's dwelling place with your repentance. The Bible says he will hear your plea. He is faithful and just to forgive your sins. He will set you free. Go and sin no more. The biggest first step ever taken is the walk of repentance. That first step begins on this earth and it lands in heaven. Repent. Scripture. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1 verse 9. So there you have it. Uh, There's our beginning salvo, if you will, uh, with our uh, teaching on the doctrine of repentance. We began today talking about this uh, personal uh, attack that's being placed upon the Apostle Paul. If they can tear him down, then they can remove two-thirds of the New Testament. And one of the arguments that's made in saying that the Apostle Paul was not a Christian because he did not teach the doctrines that Jesus taught. And in particular, one of the arguments that was presented was that Paul does not teach repentance as part of salvation. Rather, he preaches this this grace, this faith only in Jesus Christ. That there's nothing about repentance and Jesus preached repentance and John the Baptist preach repentance and therefore because Paul didn't preach it he's not a Christian and though these people may be learned and they have initials after their name like PhD and let's just look at what the scripture says did the apostle Paul preach repentance folks go to Acts chapter 20 We'll begin at verse 18. I'm reading it right straight out of the Bible. This is Paul speaking to the elders at a church that he's establishing in Ephesus. And let's just go see what did Paul preach. And when they came to him, he said to them, you yourselves know how I lived among you the whole time 
from the first day that I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears and with trials that happened to me through the plot of the Jews, how I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable and teaching you in public and from house to house. And what is it that Paul taught in public and house to house? Verse 21, testifying both to the Jews and to the Greeks of repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Did Paul preach repentance? All right. Go to Acts chapter 26. This is Paul standing in front of King Agrippa. And he is basically bearing testimony about the Lord Jesus Christ. And what does Paul preach to King Agrippa? Folks, Acts 26, we're gonna begin with verse 19. Paul speaking. Therefore, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Okay, what's the heavenly vision? But declared first to those in Damascus, Remember when he got knocked off the horse and was blinded and a disciple came and prayed for him and the scales fell off his eyes and he went outside and got baptized. What does Paul start doing in Damascus? But declared first to those in Damascus, then in Jerusalem and throughout all the region of Judea and also to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God, performing deeds and keeping with their repentance. Folks, any chance Paul had to share the gospel message with someone, he preached repentance. He baptized people in Jesus' name and he was filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't know what else to show you to prove that the Apostle Paul was indeed a Christian. Not only that, according to Brother Peter, Paul was an apostle. So that's where we'll close the show today. Uh, but just let me inspire you Study the word of God for yourself so that when you hear these heresies, you don't just sit back and accept them so that you're able to turn to the page in the Bible and show when someone is in error. So anyway, folks, if you need to write to me, I'll put the address up at the end of this video if you want to be baptized in Jesus' name, you can write to me at this address. If you want to actually begin, uh, because maybe you're new to these videos, if you would like to begin, uh, you know, from the very first video, from the very first writing, I'll put a link uh, because it's actually easier to follow sequentially at the vlog at the writing if you, website than it is at these YouTube videos. I'm just sort of picking and choosing. The, the YouTube videos aren't in sequential order at all. They're jumping all over the place. But if you visit the vlog, they are beginning with Matthew 1.1 1, 1, and we're gonna go all the way to the end of the gospel. So there you are, folks. I hope you enjoyed today. And until we meet next time.
Stay blessed.